thought about a business. I don't think it was a very conscious. Uh, we were together at uh, Edelweiss and we used to work together in Edelweiss on a number of projects and we just enjoyed working together. And so, uh, last year we kind of decided to get out and start something on our own and both of us uh, kind of got out and uh, said this Facebook's interesting and that's when uh, we went into this and, and that's how we came upon uh, Broker Spirit Skills along the way we decided that Broker Spirit Skills is a nice cheeky sounding name and uh, we liked it and we went with it uh, but nothing much more complicated than that uh, Actually, I have a nice line for this. Uh, you know, I worked for 11 years. I graduated uh, from Amdabad and worked for the next 11 years. Uh, and uh, I always thought that it's going to be very risky. Uh, and I always thought it's going to be very exciting. Uh, and at least at the end of one year of uh, doing this, the one thing that I'm clear about is that it isn't as risky as it seems if you keep your head about you. And it's a lot more boring than it seems. So a lot of people quit because I think it's going to be very exciting starting up and actually there's very little excitement uh, about this whole thing and I think if you keep your heads about you, India just offers such opportunity it doesn't matter what you do, it really doesn't matter I have a friend who runs a pick up and drop service I have a friend who runs a vocational training course uh, for you know basically uh, people from rural India and connecting them so that they can get basic sales jobs within MNCs looking to make their space there uh, I have a friend who uh, designs games. Uh, I have a friend who does energy audits for companies. Uh, I have a friend who runs a pretty popular website uh, telling people about food restaurants uh, and you know restaurants and bars to drink at. It really doesn't matter what you do. I think the beauty about India is that uh, pretty much everybody who goes out to do things. There's a large enough market and there's enough niches. I think India was for the last, largest amount of time, I think for the last 30, 40 years, India was just one homogeneous country. Everybody bought a Bajaj scooter, used Hindustan River toothpaste, uh, wore Bata shoes, went to Kendra with Jalis. And it's the first time, I think, over the last 10, 12 years that this generation is growing up. And it's it's sad because I don't think I'm part of that generation. I think it's the generation right after me. But this generation is fabulous in that, you know, the people who want to be artists, the people who want to be dancers. When I got out, everybody wanted to be an engineer and a medical uh, student, I think. Uh, and in every respect, I think you have all kinds. So like in the US, you have a Goldman Sachs and you have an E-Trade. Uh, you have a Starbucks, you have a Dunkin' Donuts. And you wonder, how can you become a $5 billion corporation selling donuts? Or, you know, Huffington Post. You know, we have a multi-billion dollar corporation which is just some cool guy writing some random articles. I think India is getting there where, you know, the greatest risk is really, you know, to use a very cliche term, the greatest risk is in not taking risk. I don't see the risk. The risk is really that you will be stuck in a corporate job and become a middle manager. I certainly didn't want to become a middle manager. My burning desire in life was not to be a middle manager at a large corporation. And I think that's the biggest risk that people take. So more power to people who are kind of starting up and uh, that's, that's all I think about it. But like I said, so between Deepak and my Deepak come, come from business family and I think you have enough examples of business families in India that have kind of uh, not worried about an MBA or an engineering degree or what have you. I think uh, it, it cuts both ways. So uh, the one, one thing for sure is that ensure that Whatever business you're doing, whatever you're doing, you're not highly leveraged or borrowing money for it. I think a lot of people make this mistake, whether they call it debt or they call it private equity or they call it, you know, if you have lesser money, don't waste your time on SEO. So, you know, just be clear about what it is that you're going out to do. Uh, everybody doesn't have to be Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, you can be an Instagram, you spend zero money, even talking from the online world. Uh, but I, I don't think there's the right answer to this. I mean, uh, the benefit of working for a time from like, I get where you're coming from, which is a lot of people coming from salary, families, etc. For them, uh, speaking for myself, my dad retired as an army officer with some modest savings. Having worked for 10 years, at least I was able to buy a house, ensure that basic things were taken care of, and then I'm getting out and saying, What's the worst? Okay, I have a house. I don't to go to college. That's my downside. Uh, and then you dream big. So I think 
depending on your means, etc., you can do that. Uh, their friends of mine, five years younger than you, started up, same background, who put up enough money that they could start out, stayed up, stayed up till they could afford it, went under, went back, worked for another two years, came back again. I have a guy who's now on his third attempt and now he's doing pretty well. But uh, you don't have to look to Facebook or Google to say that, you know, it is very new age. I think as old age as it gets, India is a land of entrepreneurs. So I think as old age as it gets, every traditional, in, in India traditionally, I think there's been this salary class that has gone one way, whether it's work in government jobs uh, or whichever way. And there's been a set of people who've thrown their kids out into the deep end and said, you're 15 years old, I've fed you for long enough, you know, go out and learn how to make a living for your living. There's enough people who've done fantastically well out of that. But I don't think it is about, I think it's just about ensuring that you're not borrowing money. Uh, things will always take longer. Uh, Probably the current crop of uh, few entrepreneurs who are attempting to make it, I think a lot of theoretical constructs and to try and test it at ground level. Uh, I think that is what, so nobody seems to be actually wanting to go in the, on the ground. So everyone seems to kind of build most of it inside an office and assume that the world is going to be uh, kind of accepting that. I think that's one part uh, if anyone has to take back is to try and know your business or a product well enough and to test it out at uh, ground level. I think that would be a huge part and beyond that of course as Ken rightly mentioned is to have faith and patience uh, to let that uh, day come. Because hanging in there with a good product which you think is uh, makes sense but I think just assuming that a theoretical product and it will possibly do well. I think it's too much to uh, ask and then thinking that I'm doing well or no. I think that's one part I think it's interesting for one to take uh, from whatever we learn uh, out of this. Yeah, I think we've been changing or tinkering with what we do on a very uh, almost uh, every quarter basis because you know, if you stay close to your clients and if you stay uh, close to what's happening on the ground. You know, clients, finally, what will happen, like we are in a fairly retail kind of business and in a retail kind of business, you'll get away by, you know, you do things one way and clients may not like it, but they'll go along, uh, they'll say, oh, these are your fees, no problem, I'll pay these, but, you know, you can sense that they're not uh, liking it. I think it's good to make a lot of mistakes and make a lot of mistakes when you're young and keep tinkering, keep iterating, keep changing around uh, what you do. Uh, but I think you know a lot of people just perpetually keep building uh, and just going on building uh, without actually going out in the market and saying, is there someone really ready to write a check for this? Uh, is there someone who will pay a single pesa for this? I mean, uh, I think the social network is uh, fairly inspiring, but I think it also cost a lot of people a lot of years of their life because you know it basically makes the uh, argument that you can kind of do whatever you feel like so long as users are happy. Uh, I just go back to my days in college and uh, Professor Avinand Jain uh, and he was like if you take a 99, uh, if you sell 100 rupee notes for 99 rupees, you can sell a lot of it and you can probably become the largest business on earth if you can find enough funders for it. I think it's important to remember that, I mean, uh, if you remember that uh, delivering a service costs a certain amount of money and uh, if you can't recoup it from your plan in any parallel universe, it's okay if you can't recoup it in the current uh, world, but in some parallel universe you should be able to recoup it. Tough one to say, I take a call. I think uh, uh, you are as good as your team. I think as a startup it's important to understand that you will attract and have natural energies around what you think and what your plan is. I think in this, if, uh, referring to Brokers team, I think the business it's fairly simple, it's kind of everyone gets the point that this is what we do, we do rental lack home for working professionals uh, currently in Bombay. Uh, it's just that uh, a bunch of people will like you and you will gravitate uh, to working with it, but there is no hard and fast rule because again as a startup, uh, you don't have too much money to kind of splurge and say that you can pick anyone. So for example, if we had to take an example from Edelweiss uh, and if anyone had to kind of work from a corporate life, it's fairly, uh, the pay pack is not something you can ever match up to as a startup. But I think there are a whole bunch of people who will come with you and work with you just from the sheer point of likability, having enough trust and have that leap of faith and saying that I think we can make this big and if it makes sense. So, you know, 
I'm happy you asked this question because it's, it, it is actually the biggest uh, one. I mean, uh, a lot of people will not think enough about who they work with uh, and will gravitate to friends. So, to be honest, DJ and I aren't particularly close friends. We also didn't work in the same team at Edelweiss. We just kind of intersected once a year when we worked on the annual day together. We, there was this big Edelweiss annual day that we used to work together on. And so, in the 4-5 years that we were there, I used to put my hand up and say, I'll do this and he used to put his hand up and we were in completely de different parts. He was in a completely different part of the organization than I was. We weren't friends at all. I mean, we probably never even had a chat together uh, except during those 5-6 days when we worked towards that annual day thing. But I think too many people make the mistake of working with friends because they won't have to put up a salary. Uh, or because, you know, they like sitting in the same room together. I think we're very clear about the fact that none of the 11 guys here. I mean, uh, we've got a couple of pilots here. We've got we've got all kinds of guys. I mean, uh, but none of these guys know each other from earlier or friends uh, or moved out together. So you know, uh, when DJ and I happen, I'll give you a very simple example. I went went to watch a movie yesterday, The Dark Knight Rises, and a guy who used to report into me met me, and he said, "Oh, are you still with these guys?" I said, "No, I've started up." So he said, oh great, when? So I said last year. So he says, oh last year, so have you got funding? So I said no. He said, oh okay, uh, okay give me a call, we'll catch up sometime. And he left. And I was with a friend of mine and he said, he didn't even bother asking you what you were doing. So you know, the only important thing for people seems to be, do you have funding, don't you have funding? We don't have funding. I hope we never have to go out to do funding. Uh, or if we do, it should be for something truly mega. Uh, but otherwise, I think uh, it's not a virtue or a thing, I think. It's just about saying, can you keep your head about you and do simple stuff? Uh, I think too many people are, you know, going out and trying to change the world. Uh, more power to them, they have more modest ambitions. Uh, but just ensure that you get people together that like working together. Just one or two on the team, particularly, I think, uh, for anyone who's kind of starting and picky about which, which members to pick, I think it's important to have people who are completely starkly different. I think it adds perspective in the group. People can kind of rise and shout and tell you.